we are on the cusp of actually getting into Guild Wars 2 raiding. But as I came to the end of Heart of Thorns, I have never, ever been this embarrassed by an MMO in my entire life. Let's talk about it. Last time I left you, we were middle of the Heart of Thorns expansion, and we were ever so close to hitting our goal of Project MMO, which is to get into the raids and see what they are like. Because, of course, I found out raids did not come with the launch of Guild Wars 2. They came with their expansion. And I realized that I had completely fouled up how to do an expansion in Guild Wars 2 because it's the first time I've dealt with a horizontal style expansion where you're not progressing through the zones, doing all that stuff before you start the end game. You're in the end game immediately and you just get rocking and rolling. So I went back and I had the best time in the Verdant Bank and it was easily my favorite zone of Heart of Thorns. We're going to put that out there right now. Loved it. It was time for me to move on to zone number three. And I couldn't help but notice that with the live audience that was watching me, they were snickering. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. And I'm like, I can see it in the corner of my eye. And I'm like, what are they? But they're so good at not spoiling things for me because they know I want to experience this blind so I could generate my own thoughts. But they were snickering and they were, they were, they were conniving. They knew what was coming. And it was because we were going into the thicket. <sighs> Now, I don't know which heroin-fueled maniac created this zone, but screw you, it's awful. Now, now, this is one of those things. This is one of those things where people who have, like, lived this zone, have loved this zone, have spent years in this zone, know it like the back of their hand, and their immediate reaction is, it's not that bad. And there's a smugness to it. There's an arrogance to it. There's an indolence to it. It's like, eh. You've been a bit of a pussy. This zone is awful. Awful. Five multi-layered zones. Like, the verticality in here is crazy. And it's so twisty and windy. And it's corridors going left and going right. And I got there. And the first, like, hour of my gameplay was just trying to get to the story marker. That was it. That's all I wanted to do. Because there's a process to these zones, which actually comes to bite me in the ass later. But the process is do a bit of the story. And then it will hit you with hope. Pop your brakes. Now you need the mastery to explore the rest of the things. So I was into a routine that made sense. Then you want to take part in the meta events and do all this kind of stuff. So I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So I was off the way and I just couldn't get there. Let me guess, it's 500 meters underground. Dude, nothing on this frigging map is where it looks like it is. Nope, it's below me again. Son of a... I was just wandering around and everywhere I went there was just like armies of mobs and then there was things diving on me and then it was like this isn't even the way it's actually like three stories above you or it's two stories below you you need to come back out you need to go back around you need to circle around you need to do all and I was, I was just it was driving me nuts it was driving me mad and after a few hours of like finding my way and sort of getting used to the zone a little bit like a very naive early look at the zone I do not like this zone, like, at all. I actually hate it. I hate it so much. And it was one of those zones that I knew in my heart of hearts, yes, there is a point in my future, if I stick with this, where this zone just isn't that bad. And I know where I'm going. But I also know that when I reach that point, I'm probably kind of going to be done with what I want to do with this zone. And all that knowledge is just a waste of time. There's a level to accessibility that's just not frustration. And I felt so much frustration in this zone just so, trying to get around to places, diverting away through it. It was very, very awkward. On top of that, I really did not like the adventures. Like, in the, in the past video of going through Heart of Thorns, I made it a point because adventures were new and I wanted to try out this new piece of content that ArenaNet had added. I got a gold medal in everything that I did, even if it was, like, slightly wonky, like the shooting range and things like that. When it came to the adventures in the Quack. thicket, eh... They just weren't as good, and that was a little frustrating. They just weren't as fun. They were more clumsy. There was definitely a few that I believe would have required a little bit more mastery, like using the speed mushrooms and stuff, which is always a little frustrating. It's like, you can't do it. You need to go and grind before you can come back and do this and get the gold medal. And ultimately, I didn't want to do them anyway. It very it wore very thin on me. So overall, like as a whole package, 
Not a big fan of this zone whatsoever. But that's okay. There's there's going to be better. There's going to be worse. That's normal, right? It's it's just part of the... Of course, I preferred something else to something else. Um, so it was time to move on to the last zone. I had done the meta event. I had really kind of good fun with that. Uh, with the challenging the lanes. And understanding that they'd drawn from MOBA influences in order to generate what they were doing. The large bosses that appear and racing around. One thing that I really discovered, and I think is one of the best aspects of Guild Wars 2, and I know so many of you have now jumped into this, is the commander feature. The commander feature, like Guild Wars 2, for me, at this point, does not work without that commander feature. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, is you have to pay a significant sum of gold. It's like 300 gold. And you are able to designate yourself as a commander. And that's not a role that is taken lightly in Guild Wars 2. Don't think of it like a Final Fantasy mentor or something like that, where you can do a certain amount of achievements and you'll get the mentor tag next to your name, and perhaps newbies will ask you questions because you have this special thing. If you designate yourself as a commander on a map, you will appear on the map as a commander. And people could just right-click that icon and they can join your squad. They could be part of your team and you then lead those people. And when it comes to meta events that have multiple lanes, so think of League of Legends, think of Dota 2, uh, where you have multiple lanes going on, this is what happens in these meta events, you'll have multiple commanders on the map. And it's vital for this whole process in Guild Wars 2 of these enormous, massive meta events that the whole zone has to take part in, that happen every hour to two hours, to have these people. Because without these people, it's a disorganized cluster of people just all over the place trying to middle middle way through it. And what it also enables people to do, like me, who have no idea what's going on. It's my first time in the zone. There's all these things happening, but I'm not clear on what the situation is or what the process is. You could jump into a commander squad, and if you get lost or you get confused, as long as you're like with the commander, you're probably fine. And that enables you to take full part in these massive scale events to get your eyes on what's going on, to get the idea of what's supposed to be happening. And then after your first run, you get a good solid idea of what's actually happening. So the next time it comes up, you can be fully involved in it in a much stronger way. The commander system is a fantastic addition to a game that requires zone-wide cooperation from all these players. Absolutely fantastic. So I just want to put that out there is easily probably one of the best social features i've seen in guild wars 2 is just the commander feature i also like that it's gated off by gold now there are obviously ways you can buy up to it but it's actually something you would probably want to buy because you feel confident enough to do this process and even if you have it you're not permanently set as the commander you have to say i can command here right you can be that guy i can be a commander here and as long as you're on me you can fall through it and so far I haven't bumped into any commanders who are just like trolling and clicking it on. People are not part of the stream who are becoming commanders and are just like, oh, this is how this game works. And it works so well because it doesn't matter if you have highly advanced elite level knowledge or it's your first time in the zone. As long as you stay with your commander, you're probably going to have a good time. You don't feel like that idiot wandering around like I did in like the base game sometimes. I was like, I don't know what's, what's going on. I don't know what's happening. You could just jump in with the commander and you're like, oh, okay, this is what's happening. Especially with events that have like a 30 second delay or they're requiring other lanes to do things because it can feel if you're in an efficient area, you clear your area and then nothing happens. And your temptation as a player is to just wander off into the wilderness and see what's going on. But if your commander's staying still and then you notice like, oh, you're with the commander and there's 20, 30 people nearby who are all staying still, something's probably going to happen and you've just got to wait it out even though you're not quite sure what that thing is. And the likelihood is people in lane A or the top lane or north lane, they need to finish their thing and then something will happen in your area. So that was great. So like the Mater event, did it all properly, checked out all the adventures, got pl did a plenty of exploring despite my frustrations with the zone. And then I was ready to move on because I had checked everything out for the most part in that zone. And then I moved to the last zone. And this is where the second time I think ArenaNet has completely thrown me for a loop and, in my opinion, dropped the ball. They did it with Zaitan. And Zaitan, I made the video, I was like, this is just insanely stupid for what this, the build-up to this encounter, the actual epicness of arriving at this encounter, the whole process of reaching Zaitan in the base game, the big final boss, and you end up with an absolute trash fight that looks like it was put together in about 10 minutes. And it's, what is this? Like, it's so disappointing. So moving into the final zone, I followed the process that the game had taught me. 
which was do a bit of the story. You'll get a little lay of the land. You'll get an understanding of what's going on. And then you'll probably be hit with some sort of mastery wall where you can then start playing around with the features and stuff of the zone. So I followed the process that the game had taught me to do. So I enter this next zone. I go to the story guy. And then immediately I'm thrown into a scenario, into an instant scenario area where I rose up and I fought and killed Mordromoth and that was the end of Heart of Thorns. And I was like, what in the f*** just happened? What? I was deflated. I was like, it's a re reasonably epic encounter, although I would argue the living world encounter with the, the ghost, the, the shadow of Mordromoth was a far better fight. It was reasonably epic, if not a little dull in places the music was fantastic the setting was fantastic Re seeing all your old guys but while i was doing it i'm telling myself well this isn't the end because we had like no build-up to this really we had like no comparing it to the zaitan encounter and the sheer balls the gall the 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 spit in your face attitude of actually mentioning the zaitan encounter just before you go into this was almost like they were just laughing and it, it again similar to the zaitan encounter it's like they ran out of steam and that's what it felt like to me because i did maybe one story thing and then immediately proceeded to finish heart of thorns the cutscene, the end credits played it was done and i, I was so confused i was like well this is kind of cool but it didn't feel like an end encounter Oh, that's an anus. That's an anus with a person in it. That's disgusting. That's absolutely a prolapsed person. Oh, God. Is Traherne becoming a dragon boy? Don't say it's like the soul of Traherne. Reborn as a dragon. Oh, no, no. Salad dragon? That's the worst. Okay, what happens now? I feel like that is a fitting reward. Is that really the end of the Heart of Thorns story? Abrupt. And no blue ballsing. And I'm kind of sat back in my chair like this, and I'm trying to, uh, you know, eloquently put forth what I'm thinking about this fight to the people watching. Uh, and I'm like, so that was the end of Heart of Thorns. It just seemed to come out of nowhere. Like, I just entered the zone, and then that's it. I'd killed it. Um, and so I, I, I look over at the chat, and they're like, you've not finished yet. You've got to do the meta Quack. achievement. Now, to this point, the game has taught me the meta Quack. achievements are really large-scale epic encounters that usually reward a good bunch of resources, a good bunch of bosses, and they're very, very fun. But they're not super story-related. Like, you know, they're, they're, like, just tied into the theme of the zone in some way, such as the crash landings and protecting the egg. You know, there's some story links to them, but, like, I mean, people were screaming at me about you've got to do this other zone. You've got to do the meta. And in my brain, I'm thinking, yeah, of course we're going to do the meta, I'm just amazed that the end of the expansion just kind of happens as soon as you reach the last zone. Uh, so I came back out and I was definitely feeling deflated, but also somewhat excited because that now meant we could do the raids. Um, but I was like, okay, we'll check out the meta event. Sure, why not? But, you know, definitely feeling a touch disappointed. Uh, you're probably wondering why there's chat written on here. It's because the Final Fantasy Live letter was last week and they did not give us chat bubbles again. So Yoshi P, there you go. Um, and it turns out... As many of you are Guild Wars players now know, and you're probably like, yeah. <laughs> There's two parts to the end of Heart of Thorns. One is you defeat sort of the brain of Mordromoth. That's what I did first, and it's, it's okay. You know, it's got epic music and stuff, but, you know, it's all right. The other part is actually defeating the body of Mordromoth itself. And that's the meta achievement. And the entire last zone, the entire last zone is 100% dedicated to one boss fight. And it's the size of a zone. And the whole place is entirely designed around one enormous boss encounter. That's Mordromoth. And it's the whole... The, the concept behind this is amazing. Because essentially what they're do doing is... 
every soldier on this battlefield must come together to defeat this massive boss. It's not just you. Everybody needs to work together to bring this beast down, and then you... <sighs> I'll, I'll come back to this in a second. And there's another part to it where you actually defeat the, the inner brain, the inner workings of Mordoroth. That's the solo part, but the other part of it is everybody who plays this game needs to work together. And you really do feel like that. I have to say, watching Mordoroth rise through the clouds in his full-scale size was extraordinarily cool. Are these all just numbered islands? One, two... What the fuck is that? What in the hell? See, that looks like Mordoma. It was amazing. Because I didn't know what was coming. I'm going in blind. Everybody's on these platforms. Again, following the commander because it's a meta event. And then suddenly this absolutely world-scale dragon appears through the clouds and is snaking around me and i'm just looking up with my camera like holy god this is incredible this is cool and then something happened that is that i've never done in an mmo it killed me which is not that surprising of course i've died in an mmo but by the time i got back it died and i didn't even get credit for being there I did not even get to hit the dragon once. I think I actually died twice. I died, got uh, respawned a, a ways away, got back into the fight. The fight is enormous. As I said, it's like a zone-wide encounter. And by the time I had glided, because I was still on like level one mastery of gliding, uh, the boss, uh, it, it like killed me again. All the platform disappeared and it was destroyed and things like that. <laughs> and I didn't even get credit. The, the game didn't even acknowledge I existed in any way, shape, or form. And I was super deflated again. Needless to say, my initial end of Heart of Thorns impression wasn't great, considering how much fun and excitement I had had throughout Heart of Thorns. I think they did such a tremendous job with m the zone design, making you feel like Mordromoth was watching you every step of the way. Every vine is Mordromoth. Everything you're touching, the floor, the vines you're crawling through, they're all Mordromoth watching and learning what you're doing. And this was my culmination. So I made it, obviously, the decision is like, I'm going to do this again because I want to fight it properly. And hopefully, there'll be kind of less people there because, obviously, I'd come to the end of the expansion. A lot of people who were there were part of the stream. So there was a lot more people there than probably usually there is. That's fair. So I came back to do it again. Had a better time. Had a better time. Did get acknowledged for being there. But still didn't get to take part much and i didn't even die and this is where we have to talk about because this is exactly the reason we get involved with things like project mmo is the decisions made to satiate the current player base and the negative effects it can have on new players and give entirely the wrong impression of what this is so this massive mo uh, for those of you who are following along with my journey this encounter that you're seeing on your screen right now originally was like 30 to 40 minutes long it's massive with multiple phases so much going on a lot of learning a lot of coordination the whole team having to glide only because this encounter came out before flying mounts existed having to glide between all these platforms to the correct places learn what the boss does when it's down deal with its ads that spawn that try and crush the platforms and Mordromoth eats the platforms you're on ultimately giving you a sort of soft enrage is that there's nowhere safe from Mordromoth if you do not kill it in time since that time, though, the fight has been nerfed, and also flying mounts have been introduced. Gliding is significantly slower, especially if you're on lower mastery, which people would have been at the launch of Heart of Thorns until later on, uh, in which case the whole team would have had to coordinate its spread, who's going where, how you're getting there efficiently, getting on target, doing all those. Obviously, power creep is also a huge, huge deal. People are just generally stronger. Even though it's a horizontal expansion system, they still increase your power in some way. Otherwise, the RPG element would be lost. And therefore, people do massive more, massively more damage than they did originally, meaning a lot of the big elites that are spawning in the fight, the servants of Mordromoth, just die. They just fall over. And in many occasions, I was flying to platforms because it looked like there was something to do. And by the time I'd landed, because everybody else had a flying mount, it was too late and i was just kind of gliding between places and places. despite my best efforts to take part in as much of a good way as possible 
it was kind of fruitless. And ultimately, I came to the decision like, I could just kind of hang around until Mordromoth lands so I can at least hit the boss and do something. And they one-phased it. So we killed Mordromoth in like five minutes, even with all his phases, compared to the 30 to 40 minutes that was originally designed around this encounter. Now, many of you, and I know a lot of viewers were like, oh, they've made this fight kind of garbage now. And there's a number of things they could do, and I would really recommend that ArenaNet probably looks into this, is while it's probably disable flying mounts here, it really spoils this encounter because I cannot even eloquently say just how epic this encounter is and then how deflated you feel when it just kind of dies, especially as a new player. You come in and it's like, oh my god, this is cool. And then you just kick it in the face and it falls over. And you're like, oh, okay. Uh, and you also feel if you don't have that flying mount, you haven't got all that way yet, it's like you're just useless. You're just this useless encounter. And it also makes the, fast, the fight just go way quicker. Now, I'm not saying they need to make the fight harder, but they should definitely try and keep it closer to its roots. And I think this is where Final Fantasy XIV excels. And World of Warcraft's been trying to do that with its uh, time walking content as well, is to get a similar feel to what it should be like. It's not going to be perfect, but a similar feel to what it should feel like without being disruptive or too easy in, in many ways because it just takes away from the epicness of the encounter. But that has to be carefully balanced because your current player base and the people who are farming this encounter for certain drops who are not, no longer impressed by the epicness and the scale, those guys do not want to do a frustrating 30 to 40 minute fight every time, every couple of hours after they've already done the meta event to even spawn this fight and give them a chance to actually fight it, right? They don't want to do that. They've done that 20 times or whatever. It's like, it's too much. You're asking too much. So there's a balance to be had. I think a simple fix in an encounter like this, you can't change the player's power, but simply removing flying mounts would probably go a long way to adding to the fun of this encounter because there's something definitely lost with a zone of this much effort to just fly from a to b and just kill the guy and then just leave and it definitely it, at the end of heart of thorns despite i loved this expansion right up until the very end i mean i really really loved this expansion right until the very end uh was just taken and lost for me and i felt deflated with both ways i then learned that apparently both of these things are happening in, at simultaneously you're attacking the brain of mordramoth and the body of mordramoth are supposed to be happening simultaneously so the idea is that while the whole world has come together to defeat the body, you're in the mind and you're working on the mind, which is weakening Mordromoth, which is helping the people on the outside and the people on the outside beating its body to death and weakening it on the inside. And you're both working hand in hand to get it done. That cannot work in an MMO because the player experiences these things separately. It would have been considerably more logical and made far more sense and would have led to a, a simply just better finale to me if you had to do the meta event first. And I believe initially that was how it was done and they changed it because the meta event might have gone quiet. Now that's understandable. An MMO requires people and you can't have people doing the story mode to turn up and they've got a meta event to do and they get cock blocked and it's like it's not even happening for an hour. Okay. And then there's not enough people that show up. So they have to go to the story. So I understand why it's been done, but the end result just doesn't work, which is I'm hoping, I'm, I'm hoping in the later expansions that they learn from this. So I'm not looking at this as like a disappointment or anything like that. I'm looking at this as like, okay, there's clearly some issues here, right? There's clearly some issues. What did they learn from this? How did this come out in the next expansion, which I don't know the name of? How did that come out? How did, they, how did this come out in the wash? What improvements did they make to this process? Because it doesn't play well. That's all I'll say. As a new player, it doesn't play nicely. I thought I was done. With, I would not have done the meta event if I wasn't being pushed. I would have been, is that it? Jeez, okay, I guess. And then left. And maybe come and check the meta event later on. I wouldn't I would have missed out on this giant epic encounter. I understand why it's done been done, and we should be very clear on that. I get why it's been done. I totally understand it. It doesn't change that it didn't work. And whether or not they went in the future and were like, okay, let's not do that again. Let's work on something else. Because it does feel like the ball got dropped there, and it's no doubt because of changes over time. And every MMO in the uh, the big MMOs that have been going for years and years and years have all run into this situation and all handled it differently. I don't like how ArenaNet handled it in Heart of Thorns. Whatever happens next is going to be important. But crucially, the crucial thing is, the next time I will speak to you on this channel about Guild Wars 2, it will be about the raids. We have reached it. We are there. We are going in. I've seen it on the map. I know where it is. How did their raids work? Let's find out. Thank you so much for listening, guys. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.